from Mario Circuit to Rainbow Road and everything in between, the Mario Kart series has given gamers memorable characters, items, and courses throughout its tenure as the dominant Nintendo racing franchise. The one thing that we always remember about Mario Kart, though, is the tracks. Whether it be the music, the difficulty, or the effects they have on us, the tracks in the Mario Kart series always deliver. With each new installment to the series, we will hear new music, find new difficulties, and enjoy new feelings that will one day become fond memories. Now with Mario Kart 8 at the wheel, <laughs> gamers worldwide will get to experience all that these HD courses have to offer. I'm Audi. I'm Random Hero. And this is GameStorm's Mario Kart 8 Top 10 Tracks. Only the Nitro courses, right? The what? You know, the Nitro courses. Only the new tracks from Mario Kart 8. Okay, so this is GameStorm's Mario Kart 8 Top 10 Nitro tracks. Wait, wait, wait. We should just do all of them. I mean, there are only 16 new ones in total. <sighs> okay. You know what? Let's just change the name completely. This is Adi and Random Heroes' super amazing, crazy awesome Mario Kart 8 new Nitro Top 16 tracks spectacular. How does that sound? Hmm. Quaint. Woohoo! Here we go! Alright, let's get this top 16 on the road! I'm excited to see what this underwater level will do. It looks really cool in high definition graphics. Hey, that dolphin rock formation's pretty cool too. Just waiting for it to get fun. Wait. This track sucks. Oh, Dolphin Shoals. I had high hopes. I kinda liked the Dolphin Rock formation on top of the mountain, then I saw the slew of air pipes, and that eel that was after. Coming out of the water on that nice drift turn, you almost hope that something awesome awaits you at the other side of the glide. But no, just a sharp turn back underwater. I wish this track could have offered the same feeling as Wario Shipyard from Mario Kart 7. If I had to choose, I would even pick Piranha Plant Slide, Mario Kart 7's worst water level, over Dolphin Shoals any day. <coughs> f*** you, Anna! And the f*** you, Dolphin! Did he just say eel and dolphin? He definitely said eel and dolphin. When you first see Water Park, you think, this should be gnarly, racing through a water park, dude! Then you actually do it, and yeah. If you're like me, you expect it to go through crazy water tunnel slides, waterfalls, and whirlpools. But what you get is an uneventful, discouraging, and huge disappointment to what could have been an awesome track. If you actually stop and admire the scenery of the track, you can see in the distance some cool looking rides. But the portion you actually race through is pretty boring. My thought was... Yeah, yeah, sure, but where's the pizzazz? Huh? Look at this place! I mean, what is the theme here? Underwater? It's boring! You get one super long loop-de-loop -loop and some undersea cupcakes. The Piranha Plant Slide is more of a water park than Water Park is. At least it has colorful slides to race down. Simply amazing. It's funny that both the new water levels happen to be the bottom two tracks of our list. Maybe the tracks are just that bad, or maybe we have terrible suppressed memories of other water levels. For number 14, we come from a water park to an arid land of nothingness. At least this track doesn't have any water. Literally, no water at all. None. Just sand as far as the eye can see. While not nearly as terrible as Dolphin Shoals, F*** you, Dolphin! F*** you, Dolphin! Dunes features a few neat and tactical aspects. Some of the turns require a little more than just skill, especially if you want on the anti-grav wall. The ruins add more appeal to this track, but not enough to matter. This track isn't great, but it's still better than the previous water levels in this countdown. I don't know about you, but I'd rather be on dry land than underwater any day. Well... Almost. Sweet Sweet Canyon is one of those tracks when you first see it you say, oh, wait. Is everything candy? And shortly after, you find out the answer is yes. Ha ha! Have some candy! From soda ponds to a giant chocolate donut, this mountain of flavor has all the goodies you could ever want. Except for an exciting racing course, that is. Although the theme of this track is very cool and unique, it fails to deliver on the racing aspect. 
I was expecting something like this. And not this. Ah, good old Mario Circuit, one of the mainstays of the Mario Kart series. With Mario Kart 8 comes the added anti-grav system, so of course this new feature would be on Mario Circuit. And one would also say that this track would just have to resemble the number 8. While it's not terrible, this track offers us nothing special in particular, no major shortcuts or anything. All in all, just a solid track. What are they thinking to accomplish here? Looking stupid? Yeah, they got that right. Moving side to side, yeah, really. I mean, with one of them just like, Hey guys, I got an idea. Let's just stand on top of each other, and maybe he can't hit us this way. Like they're immune from us if they stand up that high? I mean, seriously, just look at these idiots. This is the map that everyone and their grandma played at GameStop on the Mario Kart 8 demo. It showed the gamers that this version of Mario Kart was much better than the previous console version. <laughs> yeah, we're looking at you, Mario Kart Wii. The airport is actually pretty cool, but I wish there were some cameo appearances of some of the islands or levels from Super Mario Sunshine. That was one of the most disappointing parts for me, but not a complete deal breaker. If this track had more air glider sections in it, or something that involved more of an aerial aspect, I feel it would have really set it apart from the other normal tracks on this game. Overall, Sunshine Airport is not that bad, but could have been something really special. For me, this track spells excitement. As we break into the top 10, Mario Kart Stadium gives us a nice race course to battle on and an audience to battle in front of. And the music on this track just adds to the excitement. A few nice turns to get a few mini turbos, and a few straightaways to line up a green shell snipe. This course was a good way to open Mario Kart 8 as its first new track. Solid, but nothing spectacular. With a giant waterfall and beautiful scenery, Shy Guy Falls is a track with many unique features to it. While driving through the jungle-like terrain, one can see lush foliage, rainbows, and a magnificent waterfall. And these poor Shy Guys working in what looks to be a crystal mining sweatshop for Lord Bowser. As for the track itself, I feel it could have been a bit longer. The track plays very fast, so it will be at the finish line in no time. I wish this track was a little more difficult than it is also. And had that been the case, it probably would have ranked higher. Overall, with the cheerful mood of this map, interesting music, and a quick but fun course, Shy Guy Falls pretty much is what you would expect from a Mario Kart map. At number 8, we find ourselves in space on a daunting track and always a fun track on any Mario Kart game, Rainbow Road. But for the first time, you have astronauts floating around and an audience to race in front of. For me, Rainbow Road should be this mystical track, a track that punishes any errant drifting with a long fall into the abyss of space. But here, we get that feeling of racing on a space station. It just doesn't have that magical rainbow feel to it. This track could have been called Nintendo Space Station, and no one would guess this track was ever Rainbow Road. It could just be Nintendo's way of bringing Rainbow Road into the modern HD age. For those that are experienced on the many shortcuts this track offers, victory is certainly obtainable. It is a fun track, but it doesn't have the same hype as a typical Rainbow Road. This is probably the only Rainbow Road that you won't see in a top 5 Mario Kart tracks list. So I'm just going to go ahead and say, I love the music on this track. It fits the track perfectly and gives it this nice South American feel to it. The thwomps and stone wheels make for great obstacles for the racers to drift in between, which also makes this track a little more challenging. Not as challenging as Rainbow Road, but a nice difficulty boost from, say, Mario Kart Stadium. This track looks great, sounds great, and plays great. It's very solid all around. Thwomp Ruins finds its way into our above average category, but as we get higher into this list, we're looking for awe-inspiring tracks. Nothing average from here on out. Number 6, Twisted Mansion. This track is always one of my favorites to race because of the amount of detail that went into the design. 
You have a typical haunted mansion from the Luigi's Mansion games, and plenty of scenery to enjoy. This track does have an underwater section, but Nintendo did a good job of not trying to overdo it. And to top it off, you have Booze controlling statues with hammers. EPIC! Summertime is the first thing I think of when I race on this track. The sun shining down on the harbor, the San Francisco trolleys, and the music that sounds like something from a Sonic Adventure beach stage gives this track an amazing feel. This track isn't uber difficult, but it does give the racers options that may or may not give them the advantage in the end. Toad Harbor is something special, a something that we can't really put our finger on. The warm feeling this track gives us is enough to set it over the top, and that's why it makes it into our top five. The first thing you see at our number four track is a plane opening its front hatch with the racers inside. At that moment, you know it's about to get real. The snowy track has everything from racing down the peak of a mountain, around some cliffs, through a reservoir, across a dam, through a tree line, and a blazing fast race to the finish through the ski slopes. Everything about this track is spot on, and it all comes together to potentially cause many heart-pounding races and photo finishes. I love the amount of detail that went into this course. It just adds to the excitement of it all. Cloud Top Cruise was a part of a three-way dilemma between us when making this list. It was very hard for us to choose these next three tracks due to them being crazy good. The first time I laid eyes on this stage, I fell in love with it. I saw the airships and all those memories of Super Mario Bros. 3 World 8 came rushing back to me, which in turn gave me two thoughts immediately. Man, do I hate these freaking airship levels, and this is going to be a crazy freaking race. The clouds, the airships, the lightning section, the vines and leaves. It's a perfect way to remind us of the good old days of Mario, and a way of Nintendo showing us why we loved Mario in the first place. At number two, and my home course, we come to the Electrodome! It's Electrodrome! With an R! No, it's not! Okay, guy. There's totally an R in dome. What's a drome anyway? No. This track is literally a blacklight disco party where everyone is having a great time tripping balls on LSD. With plenty of disco balls, strobe lights, and bass, it just makes you want to party. Actually, I think I'll go party right now. You got this, right, Audie? Blink! Blink! You're not done with number two! Come back! It looks like everybody likes to party here. Well, maybe except for this guy. When it comes to Mario Kart tracks, there are two staples that have always been there. One track that has a rainbow theme to it, awesome music, and is usually very punishing. The other, Bowser's Castle. This version of Bowser's Castle is brutal. If looking at a giant ominous castle raising its gates as if to say, come at me bro, isn't enough to intimidate you, just wait until you see the inside. Metal music blasts in the confined walls of this diabolical structure of a castle as giant statues are shooting lasers at you, flaming wheels of death rotate along the raceway, and massive pendulums of destruction hang in the balance to crush your every bone. Lava everywhere. Hammer Bros waiting to pounce on you, and an enormous fiery hell beast in the shape of Bowser decimating the track with its apocalyptic fists! Good lord! Is this really the description I'm supposed to read? This place sounds horrible. Are we really gonna race in this death trap, Blake? Blake? Uh, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, he, he's still partying. 
Uh, anyways, this Bowser's Castle is awesome, and we couldn't think of any other track deserving the title of number one. <laughs> 